Hi, and welcome back to this second of my videos to do with Max MSP and how to use it to great effect, hopefully. Okay, there's a couple of things I didn't address the uh, in the last video, which I wish to address now. I ran out of time last time. First thing is, is that Max MSP is not just on Mac, the operating system. It's also on Windows, so if you want to use it there, feel free to. And anything that you do in Windows with some exceptions, which I'll go over later, but if you don't want to watch the later videos, it has to do with third-party objects, so just keep that in mind. Um, anything that you save in Windows should work on Mac, and a thing that you save in Mac should work on Windows, so long as they're the same version of Mac's MSP. Okay, so um, if you don't want to be spending a lot of money right now on a programming language you're not sure you're wanting to use, then there's a 30-day trial you can download, which is well worth checking out, and that's going to be on the Cycling74 website, which I'm going to include a link in the sidebar for. Okay, last time we were talking about data flow, and objects, and number boxes. So just to recap really, really quickly, an object is something that holds a function, and a function is something that does something. So an object is a little part of your diagram that does something. It performs a, uh, a particular task. Now, a number box is a interactive part of your Max MSP plugin, um, which allows you to click and change numbers, and then the numbers will be put out of the output, which is always at the bottom, to the input at the top, and uh, of, of the object that it's connected to, and then the output, which is at the bottom of that object, will output whatever resultant uh, data there is down and into the input of a number box, and the input of a number box sets the value of the number box. So you can see when I drag this, that the uh, 20, 126 plus 5 is 131, so we're all good on that front. Equally, if you directly connect them, you have a direct relationship with the top value setting the bottom value, so the data flow always goes from the bottom of an object or a or a element of your diagram to the top of the other element that it, that it connects to. So, in out, output to input all the time. So, you saw me move this up and down last time, and it didn't affect the top box because the data flow doesn't go in that direction. But some of you might have been wondering, why doesn't this data flow, when I let go of the mouse, then correct this bottom box to the same value that the top box has? And the answer to that is, is that there is only specific times when this data comes down this line. And one of those specific times is when this changes. Now there's another specific time that it happens, and that's when this first top number box is sent a particular kind of message, shall we say, uh, called a bang. And in Max MSP, what this means is like someone's pressed a button to send a blast of electrical current, and it switches on or causes the start of a particular thing, and what it causes depends on what it's connected to. Also, these objects can put out this little signal to say that something has happened and it can be displayed using an object that I'll show you in a minute. So just to recap that again, a bang can be used to tell something to do something or it can be used when connected to the outlet of the object that you're trying to read whether it's uh, whether something's happening or not. It can be used whether to see that thing is uh, whether that thing is happening or not, and it will become more apparent later when I give you some examples. So if I unlock this, because currently it's in it's in um, locked mode, which means I can't edit it, um, and I double click again, you can see I've brought up the interface for finding me my particular kinds of Max MSP elements. Here I'm going to go to button, and what button does is it lets you click on it. If I go back into lock now as you click on it, and it will change colour. Now when it changes colour, it will send a bang message out from the bottom. So, if we connect this to the top here, and lock, and press, nothing happens. Well, 
what this bang causes it to do when connected to the top of the under box, uh, of a number box is to take the value inside it and push it out of the bottom. So 88 equals 88, so if it pushed the value out and set this bottom box to its value again, you wouldn't see any change. So let's change this. If I press the bang, 88 again. So this sends a bang here, which pushes the data out of the bottom. That's not the only thing you can do with bangs, and plus 5 is definitely not the only thing you can do with objects. So let's move this all to the side for a second and try something new and hopefully more exciting. Now, if I double click again and make myself an object, there are loads of objects in, in Max MSP, and the way that they are, um, th the way that you call them up is to type a particular name that corresponds to a kind of object, and each object does a different thing. So here I want random. You can see, sorry, I ran with an N. You can see there's a little drop down menu that comes up, and that shows you all the available. Um, all the available objects that that you could possibly be typing at that time. So I could be typing random or I could be typing rand tilde uh, but I'm typing random. See I want to make a small dice or a small die um, so that I can select a random value out of six. So in random if I leave a space and then I put six then this whole box, this whole object here, means that I'm trying to select a random value out of six possible values. So, if I double click and get another button and connect it to the top of here, and I get another number box and I connect it to the bottom here. When I go into lock mode so that I can manipulate this again, so that I can interact with the objects. When I click at the top, you'll see that it comes out with random values. Woo! Result. Uh, but you'll also see that the random values go from 0 to 5. If you're familiar with computing, you'll probably be familiar with this concept. In normal life, we normally count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. But in computing terms, we count 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and that represents 10 values in total. And it's the same thing here, so if you really want to represent what a dice outputs, you're looking at 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 now. So you want to modify this, and we've already seen what we need to modify it, which is this plus object over here. Okay, if you were to click on the line that connects two of these elements in MSP's diagrammatic um, programming language and press backspace, it will fade away and it'll get deleted. So that's something definitely to bear in mind for future. Create another object, plus one. And here you will see when I go back into lock mode that I now have six as an option and I've lost zero as an option. And for the moment, I think that about wraps this up. In the next tutorial, I'll be going over something even more stirringly interesting and something very much related to music. Um, so I hope you'll join me for that. And I hope these aren't too long, too short, too boring, too fast. Whatever you want to say, say it to me in comments. This is aimed at the absolute beginner to uh, try and give you a, a groundwork to create good programs later. And if you get over this boring hump, then you'll be on to exciting things in no time. Okay, good luck with your patching, and I'll see you very soon.